space-time is doomed. By that, they mean it's not fundamental. It falls apart at 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, 10 to the minus 43 seconds, at what's called the Planck scale. It ceases to have any operational meaning. So these physicists are saying that space-time is not fundamental, and we have to look for a deeper mathematical framework entirely outside of space-time. And that's not just a distant wish. They're doing it now. The European Research Council has a 10 million euro enterprise funding of roughly you know, dozens or even a hundred, I think, physicists and mathematicians who are finding what they call positive geometries outside of space-time. So it's, it's really quite exciting. They're finding these... Like the amplitudehedron, or is that... Yeah, a... the amplitudehedron is one of them, the yeah. cosmological polytope, um, associahedron, um, and, and, and other, other structures. So they're, they're, they're finding these like almost like these monoliths outside of space time these 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 big structures complicated geometric structures and they they allow you to actually predict correctly the probabilities of interactions the this called scattering amplitudes for interactions of particles in space time so so they know they're onto something and the math is much easier what would take millions of terms to compute within space time through like some gluons and photons and whatever um, and quarks interacting, they can do much, much more simply outside of space-time. We didn't know what to expect. You know, we're, we're, we're taking our first little peaks outside of space-time just in the last, say, 15, 20 years. What's the one-liner or two-liner for people like, uh, when you say space-time, what, what are you speaking to directly? What is space-time? Under Newton, Newtonian physics, space was three-dimensional and Euclidean, and time was the same in all places in space. So there was one big clock and everybody had the same clock and space itself was nice and Euclidean. Einstein in the special theory and general theory effectively said, it was, it was actually Einstein's teacher who put this together, Minkowski, Herman Minkowski, but based on Einstein's work, that space and time together form a single mathematical object that Minkowski, we now call Minkowski space, but, and we call it space-time, in, in which you can trade off a little bit of space for a little bit of time. So as opposed to having a single clock that's true for all observers, mm -hmm. it, there are different clocks for different observers, depending on how fast you move, and, and different lengths of rulers, depending on how, fa how fast you move. So, so it's, 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 it's not the nice, clean neat space that we had with Newton. This is really much more interesting where space and time trade off. There's no universal clock, your clock. If, if, if you're moving, I mean, the fact that I just move like this with respect to you means my clock moved differently than yours during that time. We, have di we had different clocks and also links were different for us. You see this as an example in the movie like Interstellar mm -hmm. where he goes on a space mission and depending on where he goes, obviously time relative to the human clock on earth is different and he comes back in like 30 plus years or whatever has elapsed in a earthly time um but it might have been i don't I forgot what it was maybe like a, a certain amount of six months or a year or something in terms of how far where he went that that's right so if 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 you're moving with respect to me i'm i'm you know, I'm sitting here I, i'm thinking of myself as being still and you're moving past me at, at a uniform speed if, you, if you're at a uniform speed with respect to me, you're not accelerating, then I will see your clock as going slower. And if you, as you approach the speed of light, if you're going near the speed of light, I will see your clock very, very close to not moving at all. And if you are going the speed of light, I will see your clock has stopped. But similarly, if, if, if I'm not accelerating with respect to you, so, and you're looking at me, you're going to see my clock going slower. You're going to think your clock is going just fine. You're going to see my, so it, it, now if you accelerate, that's different. Acceleration is not relative; it's it's absolute. So there, so so that that make, that gets more complicated. Wouldn't it be true then? Somebody at the core of the Earth, or maybe you say like at sea level, would be traveling. Time would be moving faster for them than somebody like at the top of a Mount Everest or something. That is. That that is true. The, the 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 clock depends on the gravitational field, mm -hmm. um, where you are, 
But uh, it's because time moves slower in the mountains, <laughs> right? But, but because you're having you're accelerating less, so so it has to do with the it's acceleration. All it's all comparative, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Our perception is obviously not objective reality, and things are not rendered when they are not perceived. Right. So for people that for when that's a if that's a foreign notion to people, can you explain what that means, both in the mathematical sense and yeah, yeah, the philo philosophical sense, I guess. Yeah, that's a really uh, an important point, and, and and that is that we assume that the moon is there, even if you don't look. Of course, it's there, and that car on the freeway is there, even if you don't look. And if you don't believe it, don't look away, and when it hits you, you'll know that it was real, right? So people say, you know, it it it, it exists whether or not you look, and and I'm saying that the car that you perceive is very much like if you have a VR headset on, you're playing Grand Theft Auto, and you're looking around and, and you look down and you see your steering wheel. So there's a steering wheel when you look, because you're rendering it. But if I look off to the side, now, since I'm not seeing the steering wheel, there's, there is no steering wheel. There's no steering wheel anywhere at all. That, that steering wheel is gone. Except but, for potentially somebody else's experience who is rendering it. Yeah, but they'll have their own experience, right? right. So, but, 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 if you look inside the supercomputer, there's no wheel in there. There's just digital bits and, and circuits and software. So the, I render the car, I render the steering wheel when I look and I garbage collect it. I get rid of it when when I look away. Someone else may look, but, but their experience of a steering wheel is not my experience of a steering wheel. It's their experience. My, mine is gone. There is no, in, in the real supercomputer, there is no steering wheel anywhere. There's just bits. So that's what I'm claiming is true of all of the world that we see around us. You render the moon when you look, and there is no moon when you don't look. I render my foot when I look, and there is no foot when I don't look. When you say there is no, would you apply that to people? Because when you say there is no Don when I don't render him, yet in your experience, Don is certainly there, and in somebody else's experience, you're certainly there. That gets, that's a very deep question because now it gets to the question of what am I really? And what are you really? Right? So if you want to say, well, no, Don is really just a 160 pound piece of human flesh and blood and so forth. And that's all there is to Don. I would say um, that's within the space-time framework. And we know that the space-time framework is not fundamental. No object in space-time is fundamental, and that includes your body or my body. Whatever you are, you are not an object in space-time. To the contrary, space-time and everything inside space-time is a creation of yours on the fly. So I'm turning the whole ontology around. Most of us assume that we are little 100 to 200, 300 pound objects inside a vast space-time universe. I'm saying that's false. That vast space-time universe is a tiny headset that you're using that you'll discard. And it's just one of countless headsets that you, whatever you are, can use. So when you ask, you know, is Don really there? Well. In this VR game of space and time, this pretty trivial headset, Hoffman's body is rendered when you see it or when I see it. And I don't know that what you see is what I see at all. I, we use the same words because we learned them by ostensive definition from our mothers. And our mothers use the same words in the same context. Um, and I'm not saying they're not the same. They may be, but we don't know. But, but whatever I am is not an object in space-time. Space-time is a trivial, trivial framework for us to experience a projection of who we are. <laughs>